Hello, hello, and welcome to the first book review of the year. Um, my name is Shell. Uh, welcome or welcome back, and yeah. So the first book that I managed to finish in 2023 is Behind the Enigma, the authorised biography of GCHQ, Britain's secret cyber intelligence agency by John Ferris. This book is a chunker. It comes in at a massive 848 pages. Now, I own <laughs> the hardback edition the Kindle edition and the audiobook and I actually ended up reading parts of all three um, while I was reading this book. I had fully intended to get it finished before the end of 2022 but sadly that was not to be. So as the title implies the book actually covers the history of GCHQ, which is part of the intelligence services of the British government. Um, it started in the early 1900s and continues to the present day. And throughout the book, you actually see how it came from being different branches to how it became GCHQ. It's a very, very well researched book. Um, you can check all of the sources because GCHQ have actually made all of the files that John Ferris used while researching the book available in the public domain. Um, so we can check it and as the book is the only authorised biography of this, this branch of the civil service, it's very much unique in that respect. Uh, John Ferris himself is a historian and as such, he knows how to write a book that covers a large period of time. I mean, admittedly, in this case, it's only a little over 100 years, but that's still a sort of a, a, a quite a big span of time. There wasn't much in the way of filler in the book, and it was packed full of useful information from the first page to the last, and there was an extensive reference to uh, section at the end. I have a lot of very mixed feelings about this book in all honesty. Uh, by necessity there are parts of it that just can't be um, fleshed out um, for national security reasons. It's very informative during World War One and consequently into World War Two and to a degree the Cold War. After the Cold War things do get a lot hazier but that again is by necessity due to national security they couldn't they couldn't really get into a lot of detail about anything that would impact or shed light on how GCHQ operates uh, today in the modern era so um if you're looking for uh, the information about how GCHQ is run today, you will be disappointed. It's very vague. It does give some detail, but it is vague and by necessity, it it is. So like I say, the book was very well researched. It was very informative. It really opened my eyes to a, a parts, lots of the parts of how GCHQ functioned that I just was not aware of. Um, and it's given me a newfound respect for for how the, uh, how the how intelligence is gathered, what it's used for, who sees it, who doesn't, and so on and so forth. Sorry about that. The postie was at the door and the doorbell scared the crap out of me. Um... Yes. So, there were parts about this book that really drove me crazy. Um, I understand that a government, uh, a government organisation uses a lot of acronyms, but because this is a book that's supposed to be written for the benefit of people who aren't <laughs> members of GCHQ and aren't familiar with 
the different subsets and how it all works. The amount of acronyms really ended up being confusing. Um, if you're listening or watching, sorry, this review before going into the book, what I would highly suggest that you do is just have a pad and a piece of paper and when the acronyms come up for the first time they are explained, just make a note. Honestly, trust me on this, it will make your life so much easier. Um, it's not a small book. It's, like I say, 848 pages of very dry information. I can't figure out how how he managed to make a book about spies and intelligence and war boring. But he managed. <laughs> it, that's why, it, I mean, it took me so long to get through it. Um, and it did in, in, at times feel like I was slogging through it. But, I mean, like I say, the, the, the book was really, really good. Um, it jumped back and forth in time periods as well. It sort of, it did, like, the history to the end of the Cold War, for example... And you're thinking, yes, I'm making progress, you know, because we're getting closer and closer to the modern day. And then it would jump back and then give you the same time period, but from a different perspective. And you're just, and I did find that quite disheartening in places because you think to yourself, I'm making so much progress because it's such a big book. And then you sort of go, oh no, wait a minute, here we go. We're back to World War II again. Um... And I can understand the reasoning for why he's done it the way he's done it is rather than talking about what the period of World War One and then peace and then the period at World War Two and then peace and then the Cold War and so on and so forth and doing all of them in time blocks. He's done it from the perspective of different sections and different methods and he split them out that way. But I think it would have made more sense if it was chronologically written rather than jumping and jumping and jumping and jumping. But I mean, overall, like I say, I had mixed feelings about the book. I am glad I read it. Copile says that it came out as a four star read. So it's a four star. So let me know in the comments down below if you're considering reading G uh, Behind the Enigma if you've read Behind the Enigma, if you agree or disagree with me, I would love to hear what your thoughts are um, in the comments below. And if you don't want to leave a, a comment or talk about the book, then leave me a magnifying glass emoji um, for looking for clues. Um, and I'll catch you all in my next video. Bye.